Okay, so we are going to start now. Uh, we are giving this presentation that is called Taking Bytes from Cassandra Clients and Apache Gora Perspective. So uh, my name is Renato, he's Luis. We are going to be giving the talk together. Hope, I'm hoping that doesn't annoy you people that much. So about us, we are committers on this Apache project that is called Gora. In just a minute, we will explain to you what, what is all this about. We actually met on an Apache conference a couple of years ago, and then we just started working together. It's really crazy because he's Scottish, I'm from Peru. We have really different cultures, but we we found on open source and code a really good friendship. So uh, we've been working on, on Gora that we like to think that it's an ORM, an over relational mapping framework for, for NoSQL. We want to think that we are the the framework for ORM for NoSQL data storage. So we're going to talk to you about it and how we are using it with Cassandra. We have some implementations that uses uh, DynamoDB from Amazon. And we are really happy to be here. So just a little thing about, uh, about me. Uh, that was, I was doing paragliding in Rio de Janeiro. I studied my master's there. It's just awesome, really a nice school. And well, I am a database, uh, database consultant, I think, like most of, of us here. I'm a big data and open source enthusiast, and I do a lot of code. I do some coding for the uh, Apache Software Foundation. So now it's, now it's Luis up. Hello. Um, first things first, uh, I'm from Scotland, and as Renato said, we have quite different, uh, different cultures and the way we speak today, I've had numerous conversations with people and I've had conversations where, an example, I've been talking about cascading and somebody thought I was talking about Cassandra and I spoke to them for about five minutes on cascading and they were convinced I was talking about Cassandra. So if anything comes across the wrong way, I apologise in advance. Anyway, um, I'm a Scottish expat now, stay in um, Sunnyvale, not too far from here. Um, I arrived in January. I'm a postdoctoral research scholar at Stanford. Um, my background is in cost consultancy uh, within the construction, and en construction industry, engineering, civil engineering. Um, so really, uh, I, I started getting involved in um, coding a number of years ago, and you know it's taken off since there. Um, I'm a keen um, developer within Apache contribute to a number of projects there uh, and I'm cycling daft I absolutely love it it's not getting any better here now that I stay very near to Skyline it's got a lot worse actually so just a quick introduction to Gora before we got into the Cassandra stuff um, simply put Gora is an in-memory data model and persistence framework for big data um, what we need, mean by that, there's a number of slides that we'll just go through to, you know, try and develop on that. But, um, you know, where, where it's in its niche areas, the, the main use case for Gore originally was to, to support MapReduce over the data that was in the data stores, a number of locations. Um, the point I want to get across here is that if you, people that, that's been um, familiarised with, with frameworks like uh, Hibernate, etc., well, I've seen, um, you know, the generation of, of Java beans or whatever and, 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 you know, mapping this stuff. Gora, however, I like to think of as, as much more than just ORM. Um, well, I mean, it's not relational for starters. And, um, you know, simply because of the fact that uh, it supports um, Hadoop MapReduce out of the box, there's, there's, there's much more that can be done with it. Um, so, a wee bit more about Gora. I know that looks like quite a lot. Um, the top part really is just kind of ripped from our website. I don't want to go through it word by word. Um, you can grab the slides, but, but and essentially, it's just the, the five bullet points down the bottom I'd like to probably focus on. Um, data persistence, we've put quite a lot of effort into trying to extend the data stores that we support within Gora. Um, and although there, there, there's a mention of like MySQL and, and you know, hy HyperSQL. Um, we've been moving further and further away from, from that. That was really supported in very, very early, uh, early versions of Gora. Um, data access as well. Um, we want to be able to access data that's put into data stores and to be able to do queries there, whatever, regardless of its location. Um, we're, we're, we're constantly updating what's actually in Gora. So um, we're looking forward to, to, you know, moving on with it. 
and as I mentioned, you know, the, the map reduced stuff. So, I mean, what do we support Angora? Right now, um, we're kind of sitting with legacy Avro implementation. Um, same with the HBase stuff. Um, Renato pr um, participated in Google Summer of Code last year. The two of us um, worked on that, which is to write a web services API for Gora and to hook it up to Amazon's DynamoDB. So um, additionally, we support Accumulo. That, that module's been there for about a year or so as well. Um, th there is an, a number of modules that are sitting um, on the Jira instance for MongoDB, Solar, various other things that just haven't been thoroughly tested enough yet because of the use cases that other committers and developers users have there. So very briefly, just before we get on to you know, talking about the, the main point of this presentation, we just go through um, you know, what's, what's really in the pipeline for Gora moving forward that, that's of certain relevance to the big data space. And the answer is, to be quite um, concise about it, is there's a lot going on. So, for example, what we are planning for this year is we are planning integration with cascading. That's why he was asking some developers of cascading, how would we be in integrating uh, our project that has Gora with cascading? We also are thinking on integrating for with Apache Hama. I don't know how many of you are familiar with it. It's a uh, it's just a, a BSP a paradigm, it's bulk synchronous processing. We were just trying to provide some other, some other ways to process data in, uh, besides MapReduce. So, and we are also trying to put as more data stores available through Gora. And one of the Google, Google Summer of Code projects for this year is integrating with Oracle NoSQL. We know that it might not be the most popular data store out there, but we know there, there are people using it, so we're planning to integrate it as well. Uh, Gora is actually being used, its main use case is, is Apache Natch, which is a web crawler, and we provide Natch uh, the ability to store data wherever they want, right? So we are now trying to provide the same thing for Apache Giraffe. Giraffe is another BSP, uh, bulk synchronous processing framework, that is based on the Pregel paper that Google uh, released a couple, yeah, this year. So we are working on that, on that as well. So we are just trying to provide to just to let everybody, or yeah, everybody use GF. This is something that came about in um, this particular project. It's planned within ODT, which is a scientific project within Apache. Um, it's described as uh, um, metadata for middleware, um, and one, one aspect, one um, module within ODT is uh, the cataloging and archive system metadata cataloging. Um, basically, what we want to be able to do is, right now, they build Lucene, uh, they, sorry, they build Lucene indexes for their, metada uh, their metadata cataloging purposes, um, and we really want to try and open up, use Gora to open up, um, you know, how they can do their metadata cataloging within ODT. Um, this one, I had a conversation on the Big Top users list uh, beginning this week. So this slide's literally just in here um, to, to say another thing which you know we're going to be working on with the Big Top community, hopefully, um, which is to try and maybe get Gora working on Big Top to, for tighter integration with other um, projects within the Hadoop ecosystem. Um, in time, you know, it, it's our aim and objective to try and get um, other distributions, other type packages for Apache Gora as well. Um, so that's a step in that direction. And finally, this one's kind of like, I've just named it a vacant slide, but it's not really. Um, it's like maybe Gora can, you know, fit your use case. Uh, obviously, people can design systems whatever way they want, but, you know, the... the, the Benefit that Gora gives you is it gives you a, a hell of a lot of flexibility in the way that you want to um, store and access your data. There's no doubt about that. So, you know, why are we, why are we here telling you that, oh, you know, this is what's happening with Gora? And the, the, the justification is really quite simple, is that it opens up um, all these other projects that I'm talking about to also use Cassandra. So, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of taking in all these other projects that otherwise wouldn't have the ability to do so. We're taking the ability to them that, that you know they can push their data towards Cassandra and they can access it from Cassandra should they wish to do so. Um, so yeah, Gora's a lot more 
than uh, ORM for no SQL, or we think so anyway. So, introduction dusted. Um, going to go on and just describe what's going on in the presentation. Uh, and what we refer to is kind of, for, especially for Cassandra, um, the, the kind of the, the client data store wars, you know. There's a lot of, there's a lot of vendors out there that, are, that have got stuff, some commercial, some otherwise. Um, although it seems to be that the clients are, you know, open source, it's not exactly a trivial decision when you want to go and, and, and select the client. However, um, when you look at the NoSQL space, generally speaking, clients are not something which is focused on um, tremendously, um, which is, for us, when, we, when that was the outlook that, that we got, was, I mean, it's quite, it's quite surprising that, that people don't focus more on, you know, the client part of the stack um, with the people that, that we've been talking to and the use cases that, that, that we've been hearing about. So our motivation really for, for looking into that and for, for you know, trying out different clients, um, we natively supported Hector within Gora. Na Renato's going to talk a good more, you know, a, a bit about um, you know, the uh, Gora architecture and, and, and what was going on. But we started getting uh, you know, curious about maybe implementing a pluggable architecture, client architecture for the Gora Cassandra module. Um, there's some in uh, inquisitive thoughts in there, which we get through, and there's some technical thoughts in there as well. There's a testing suite for Gora CI, uh, sorry, for Gora, called Gora CI, which if I've got time, I would like to talk about as well. Um, you know, that's been developed and, and, and contributed, but with regards to using it with Cassandra, um, we've not really had a, an opportunity yet. And then summary and, and, and really some discussion. Uh, so I'm hoping that, the, that we can try and invoke some reasonable discussion towards the end. So in a nutshell, these are the types of things that you would expect to be able to do, and these are the things that we can do currently. Um, you know, this is a part of the, the, the core API, and for each data store implementation we have in Gora, Gora Cassandra being no exception, um, you know, we, we, can, we can, you know, do these operations and this is the beauty, one of the, the, the beauties about Gora is that depending on which data model you have, uh, we like to push most of the functionality out, define the core API and push most of the functionality out so you can leverage, you know, the, uh, the, the nature of the API, the, 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 sorry, the data store that you actually want to persist your data into and, and use it in as powerful a way as possible. However, the, te the questions we had, um, you know, if we're using clients, you know, technically all we're doing is kind of wrapping the code, packaging it, and, and using it within the Gora API. Um, you know, what kind of overhead is this actually costing us? That was one of, you know, that, that's kind of the justification behind the technical side of things. From the inquisitive side of things, um, we really wanted to know about uh, which clients to actually use. There's plenty of them out there. Everybody knows this. And Cassandra, kind of uniquely here, there seems to be a hellish lot more clients out there for Cassandra than, than, than other stores. Um, and there's no real, you know, guidance out there to, to you know, to push you in the direction of, of what one suits your use case. You've kind of just got to go out there and make the decision yourself. So, in, in, in implementing pluggable architecture, um, we want to do it in such a way that, you know, we can address these concerns. Um, we can address our, you know, our curiosity about this kind of stuff in a user-friendly, in a developer-friendly way with as, as minimal configuration as possible. So, um, an, obs an observation, you know, no SQL is newish. The clients that surround Cassandra are newish as well. Gora's even newer. Um, the tag cloud there is taken from the Cassandra wiki page. And, you know, it's obvious that it's not only the Java drivers that are, you know, numerous. It's for other languages as well. We, we are predominantly, well, I mean, we're focused on Java. But, I mean, it, it just goes that um, I'm going to go in, on and talk, actually, about, you know, some of the things that, 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 that we've, we've observed and which have kind of led to this. And so I'm going to go, short story. Um, it was warmer in here earlier on and I saw some lazy eyes, so please don't fall asleep or else, you know, this might possibly happen. Um, 
I was speaking to a guy that's uh, got a book coming out on NoSQL, and the book aims to, you know, present some use cases, problems essentially, and describe, you know, what storage, um, which NoSQL solution should be suggested for that particular problem. Um, after having a conversation with the gentleman for an hour, two hours, however long it was, I just dropped in, because I was working on Gora, dropped in, um, so what's in the book covering clients? And there's nothing. So that was really the, the kind of, that's, that's, that's where our uh, kind of curiosity stemmed about, you know, we, we really need to try and get this working better in Gora, and we need to try and find out more about how Java drivers are actually working and how we can try and use more of them, provide more of a flexible model for others to use them. Um, so, story over. Let's move on. Renato. So, as we've been talking here for, for a while already, we've noticed that using the client or choosing a specific client for Cassandra is not actually a trivial decision. We know there are several of them outside, but we really don't know which one is the best one, right? Even though uh, I think there was, probably most of you are on the Cassandra users list, there was an email a couple of months ago asking exactly this question. So which one is the better one? And you could just see people talking about it and say, oh, the, the Java driver from Datastacks is, is the best one. You can do multiplex requests at the same time. And then there was the people from ASTNX saying exactly the same thing and some other ones defending Hector. But for us, for example, that we are users of Cassandra, the main idea, what we want is just, we just want to take our data out of Cassandra. We just want to take our data out, we just want to put our data in, in the most efficient way. So uh, as we've been talking here, what Gora aims is just to be able to provide users the ability to, to take your data in, um, to just to take your data out in the simplest way. So we define four, for main operations for for all our data stores, put, gets, and deletes, um, and we have a scans, I think. So what we are aiming with is just to provide those operations for any of the data stores. So one of the most important thing on our pluggable architecture is just to provide by a simple operate by simple properties, let the user decide which one of those clients to use. So we can just go there and choose which client to use, and then we'll be switching our whole application to use a different client without actually having to rewrite our whole application. So that's our main idea. So we've done this. We have a Gora Cassandra client, which is actually in charge of telling a Nectar client to do, to do the operations we want, right? To read, to write, to delete or yeah, to add some columns or whatever. But there are a lot of implementation inside of, of these ones that we as users or as uh, developers, we probably don't really want to get too deep, right? We just want to get our data in, get our data out, and just keep on moving, keep on developing. So uh, so we've talked about, about, about Gora. So the main properties, we have three main files that we, we need. One is the Gora properties file, and on the Gora properties file, we can decide which data store we want to use. So we, I could decide Cassandra data store, I could use HBase, Dynamo, I could use just anyone. And there's also two more files that I need to decide to, to use. And one of them is the Cassandra mapping one. On, on the Cassandra mapping file, uh, we decide which parts of our data is going to be used in which uh, column or super column inside Cassandra. So we use this based on our, we have to define our schema, right? Our schema is the most important part. Could you go to the schema? So our schema is just defined on, on, an, average, on, on an average schema. Our average schema is just JSON, so we can just define our schema as JSON. So after we define our schema as, as a JSON file, as an average schema, we can just, we have a compiler that compiles this code into data beans, and then we use these data beans to persist on any data store. So the only three files we need to actually run on any, on any data store we provide is only these three files. So we only need three files, and then we can have, we, we can have the ability to write into HBase, Dynamo, uh, Cassandra, MySQL, 
and now we are all having all these new data stores plug into our project. So the idea, of course, like I'm, I know there are some limitations as in the configuration on the special configuration of each data store. But if, for example, for me, I am a developer. It's easy. I mean, it's easy. I just want to try how my schema is going to, uh, how it's going to work on different data stores. I can just put it there and change it and just start pointing to a different cluster and start writing my data to Dynamo, to HBase, to Cassandra, to anything. So our main motivation here was to decide on which client to use. So I don't want to be having to rewrite my application every time I have, I want to change the clients. We know there are several clients out there. So we've decided to add uh, a new property that is, that is going to help us decide which one. And so how serialization is, is being worked on, on Gora? Uh, a couple of releases ago, we used to serialize everything into Cassandra the way, the way they were, right? So if I was storing uh, strings, so I would be serializing U UTF-8 uh, objects inside, or numbers, I would be doing the same thing. Nowadays, what we are doing, we are serializing everything as bytes, so we're using just bytes comparator just to get it in. We are, we are planning to do some, some benchmarking, but sometimes it, the time is just limiting, right? We are not being able to do a lot of benchmarking, but that's one thing we have in mind and we are planning to do. And we are also planning to, we have a lot of dependencies on Avro. Uh, Avro is a serialization format that Hadoop uses. But we are planning also to support another one that is Twitter Sparket that was just released a couple of months ago. So we are planning to just expand ourselves to other different serialization models. And we are also taking into consideration, for example, LinkedIn's Voldemort, which they have a serialization layer to decide uh, how they are going to yeah, how they're going to serialize. So um, the, the bin definition, I think I've talked about, I've already talked about it, is really you don't have to worry about modeling your data, right? Sometimes it's hard to move from relational database modeling to, to Cassandra, right? For, for most people, at least for me, it was at the beginning, I didn't quite understand it easily. But sometimes if you just have to define your data, your XML, your, your schema, you only define your schema, and then you're ready to go, and then you can persist your, your data where wherever you want. Please go ahead. So that's what we are, what we, we've done. Now, right now we are supporting Ecto Client and Astyanax. We are also looking for contributions, uh, code contributions, of course, into um, uh, the, Java, the Java driver, there are uh, Intraver, there are Pillows. There are several clients that we would actually would like to support for users to use, right? So just go ahead. So as soon as we, we, we've already done this, so you have, we have another property that is called the Gora Cassandra client type, and then you can decide which client to use, Hector, Astyanax, Philips, Data Stacks one. And for the Cassandra mapping, you won't do anything. It will just, you, you can do, go and have, and have a banana. So everything will just stay the same, and you won't do anything else. So you only have to decide which client to use, and about your schema, you won't do anything as well. You, you, as the picture says, you can just forget about it, right? And well, what the problems we, we've had so far is every client have different uh, abstraction layers. So some of them, it's, they hide some, uh, yes, they hide some, some things for us as, as developers, right? Some of them, they give us the, the error handling, for example. In some of them, they send us, they send us an, an exception. Some others, they just send us a, a Boolean. Uh, like, I don't know, for example, we were working on creating schemas or deleting schemas. Some of them would send us an, an exception if they couldn't find it. Some others, they would just send us a, a Boolean if it was or it was, or it was not deleted. So to handle all these uh, dif uh, different features that each client has, it is problematic, and as I've, I've already told you, nobody wa is wanting to, to rewrite their application every time we want to try a different client. So this is the main focus, right, that we can provide us for, for you. So every client is different. They all have their own characteristics. But, and of course, this creates problems. But these problems are trying to be solved by Gora, by, by the Apache project. So what's the positive outcome of all this is that serialization is still being done by each client. So each client is supposed to be good enough to not lose the data. We have the Gora CI model 
that is a continuous ingestion test that uh, Luis is going to talk about it just in a sec. And the concurrency also has to be handled by each client. Gora, of course, takes care of it or part of the concurrency model. But yeah, it's the client's main, main task. So data modeling, we can just focus on modeling our data, just putting our schema on, on what we want. We don't, want, we don't have to worry about the client's error handling and all that stuff because it's already uh, somebody else would take care of it. So, and, and the freedom from clients, that's what we are trying to put. Because as we're saying, it's sometimes it's, it's just difficult to choose one. So maybe if I want to use the, the, data, the data stacks one, I can just put it in, give it, uh, give it a spin, and then if I'm not happy with it, Maybe I can just use another one. We have a couple of patches that we are planning to put in on the next following months. That is, uh, we call it a query optimizer, so we can actually decide what type of query we want to use within Gora. If we are doing range slice queries, or we are using I don't know, composite columns or composite queries. So we are trying to put that in, so Gora will actually take care of it. And we will only do gets, we will only do puts, we will, we will only do deletes, and that's it. I mean, it's going to be drop that symbol, and that's the, that's, the, that's the idea of it. And it's really easy to extend it. The API that, is, this, that has already been set up, it's really easy. We only have to extend a couple of classes, and that's it. We can have an, a different client. We can have our applications up and running in, in minutes, literally. OK. I said if we've got time, and we've got plenty of time. Um, so I was wanting to talk you know, briefly about this, uh, which is the uh, kind of, it's a development kind of test suite for, for Gora, which has not been thoroughly tested against all data stores in Gora. Um, we're really keen to try and test it on Cassandra. Um, the, the, the guy that contributed, um, Keith Turner, is a um, contributor for Apache Accumulo, and it's been, tested against Accumulo and HBase, but as I said, we're keen to try and get it working with, um, with Cassandra. Um, you know, there's a description of what, what's going on there, and I've actually put the, uh, I've put, I've put the GitHub link to Keith's repo for you to go and maybe check it out if you want to. Um, the point about this one is that, you know, Renato and myself haven't had, you know, access to the, the infrastructure to run this kind of stuff in the way that we wanted to for quite some time. We've been tied up with other things as well, yes, but you know, it comes down to the fact that we've, you know, we've not had, um, you know, the infrastructure to kind of run this, this stuff. However, um, the, basically the, the, the testing suite uh, enables you to uh, generate and, uh, you know, a large uh, linked list. What it does is you can delete nodes within the list um, and then verify what the nodes you deleted at scale. The larger you deploy it, um, you know, the better chance you have of, of trying to verify at scale what data has been lost, if anyway. Uh, the guys at HBase have actually riddled out a couple of bugs, I believe, with this, and before they release it at Accumulo, um, before they re release Accumulo, they run the uh, ingestion suite there as well, and they said that it's been working pretty well to, you know, riddle out some bugs from, you, you know, the RCs prior to them pushing the actual releases. Um, hence the reason that we want to try and get it running with Cassandra. Um, I know there's been a, there is a lot of large-scale integration testing going on, etc. However, for, for our use case, this, is, this code's been sitting there and um, we've not really had the ability to try and go on and do the things that we essentially want to do with it. Um, so, I suppose if, if you do pull Gora and you do have access to you know, the infrastructure that we're, we're, we're talking about to try and run this stuff and, you know, please drop us a line on the development list or the users list and we would really, really love to hear your results about, about running Gora CI on the Gora Cassandra module. Um, so, a review of, 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 you know, what we've been over here, really. Um, I mean, this is great exposure for Gora. Um, Renato spoke last year at uh, ApacheCon over in Germany. Um, but, I mean, we've not really been able to speak uh, as much about Gora as we'd wanted to. Um, however, in review, there are many, many clients out there. Um, we've learned a lot about the clients, Astonax, Hector, and, you know, by the end of this week, with the help of uh, Michelle, we're hoping that he's going to, we can work in tandem to try and get Datastax Java Driver working by the end of uh, the conference. If we could achieve that goal, that would be excellent. 
Um, we are, we were, sorry, more to the point shocked, pretty much, um, when we started out this. That was what led to the initial motivation to try and, you know, implement a pluggable client architecture for Gora Cassandra. Um, and you know that the client, the choice of client shouldn't be something that's kind of taken trivially. It should be thought about and you should understand exactly what's going on when you think about implementing it within your stack. Um, when I was at ApacheCon uh, in Portland earlier on this year, um, one of the keynotes there was uh, a gentleman talking about, you know, trying to be a generalist and understanding exactly what's in the stack so when something goes wrong, you know, you can jump up and you can jump back down and, you know, it's totally to your, your advantage to be able to do that kind of stuff. So, in a way, I think, um, you know, this kind of, this project that, we, that we've embarked on here to try and implement this stuff within Gora, put it into trunk, get it tested and probably hopefully release it in the next 0 0.4 release. In a way, maybe it's a, an attempt to try and move to being, you know, more generalist, to understand more about the technologies that we're surrounded by and that we can hopefully use. Um, we've learned a lot about it, um, about the way that, for example, Renato mentioned error handling and stuff like that. That's just a trivial example of some of the stuff we came across. Um, and hopefully the pluggable, the pluggable client architecture really came to the surface only with the Cassandra module. Um, from my point of view, that says quite a lot more about Cassandra than it does about Gora, um, how vibrant it is, how many people are working in different aspects of Cassandra, um, how many kind of sub-communities, micro-communities there are on the client side of stuff, and, and really how that's driving the product forward in many, many different ways. And we fit maybe above that level, but I mean, we're still um, you know, in, involved in, in, in development of, of various components that, that sit on top of Cassandra as well. So, as I'd said, I mean, we learned a good, a good bit more about, you know, the area that, that we work in generally. Um, in review, in conclusion, sorry. Uh, pluggable client code is currently sitting on Renato's GitHub account. Um, we're going to be working on it this week. And really, this is kind of a call to arms. If, I mean, if, you, if, if you're working on clients, you're interested in clients, and, and you maybe maintain one, or you know development team that doesn't maintain one over and above Hector and, and Estenax, we would really love to hear from you. Get to know the API, see if we can try and, you know, implement it within the operations that, that, that we currently support within Gora. Um, and, and also as well, um, you know, we've got a real uh, desire to try and pull the pros from all these clients and make these pros configurable very, very easily within Gora properties. Just, you know, set some trivial properties that, that you, you know, for example, consistency within Hector put it into the properties file, you, you change one string and you know, you've got different consistency going on. This is stuff like that that, that can make the difference between deployments and, and you know, ad hoc deployments that, that make a difference. Um, if we didn't try this kind of stuff, we would have been kicking ourselves. To be here at um, Cassandra Summit and to not talk about this, what we've been doing, would have been a fruitless effort. Um, we're glad to have the opportunity to come here and talk about this kind of stuff and as I'd said, if, uh, the, some of the, if you guys are maintaining clients that are active, then you know, we would love to try and implement that stuff within Gora. So, we're done. And we'd like to say thank you very much for staying with us. Thank you. <laughs> of course, we're early. So, discussion, questions, please, if there's any. I will. What's the cost um, of uh, the Gora client on top of any of these ex other clients like uh, Hector or Astanax? What, what's the purpose? What, what is the cost? What's the cost? Right, delay, latency. Right. Um, so, 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 so this is one of the questions that we had at the start, mm -hmm. um, the technical questions. And really, um, part of this week, I'm hoping to have better answers for you tomorrow, the next day, whenever, when we, when we get a better idea. I mean, we're trying to solidify the API right now and, and, and work with different clients and, and see what's going on. With regards to actually talking about stuff like latency, uh, reads writes, you know, how, how, the, how the performance works, um, we don't have that just now. One thing that, that, um, that I should maybe probably say here is that, you know, the purpose of us doing this is not to specifically attack any one client or to, to attack any communities and say, you know, this is better than that or this is better than that. 
Because, I mean, that's not, what, that's not what the purpose of this. The purpose is to give users, you know, the option to, to pick whatever they want. But I'm sorry, with, with regards to that kind of stuff, we, can't, we don't have, we, don't, we haven't run, we basically have, we don't have the numbers just now. That's fine. Uh, a backup question was, so, so you had 25 million nodes in one of your slides. How do you define a node? What is a node? What is a node? Yes, you had 25 million nodes in, in your test. Yeah. So, uh, just about your, your first question, is, that's really a, a hard question to ask. And I would ask you another question. Which client is better, ASTNX, Java driver? There's no, there's no benchmark that we can actually go and run for each one of them. So that's one of the, that was one of our uh, motivations, right? We don't know which one is the best one. And we would like the help of, of other people to help us start designing tests to run, to run this. The test we run is the, the Gracia MO. So these uh, nodes that we call on our linked list, they can be anything. You can just define your data bin on Gora. You can just define that data bin, and that data bin is the node. So we are defining 25 million, uh, let's call it, uh, rows. You can just define 20, yeah. So every, every node is actually an, uh, an entity, a row. Yeah, it would be a row, right? So we, we're just writing 25 million rows on a cluster and we're just running them. The idea is that we write the 25 million and then we just start uh, deleting some, some clients that are doing the reading and then, we, and then we run another job, another Hadoop job to verify if we've actually lost any data on this process. So these nodes can, are just anything, yeah. You can just do, you can do whatever you want, yeah. We actually run it with Natch, with Apache Natch so most of it is just web pages, one link in the other one, yeah. Uh, so one thing I'm seeing from this week is that we might need to do a painful cl client switch, so I would be interested in Gora. Um, but I guess my question is, if you're back to like get, put, delete, um, are you back to using Cassandra at the lowest level? Um, what, is there any support for CQL? Um, and then the other question is a little different, but one of the ways we're using Cassandra is we do have this concept of the domain object, so we'd be a great match for an ORM. Um, but when we say put this domain object into Cassandra, we generally want it to go into like three different column families that are organized differently so that when it's queried, it can come out all the different ways we need to query it. Um, does Gore have any support for that? First question again, sorry. Uh, what was it, Bernard? Right, right, right. So, so, so we, we, we basically, you know, we we're talking to uh, Michelle from Datastax, and that kind of that level of granular, granularity um, from the data model, we, 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 we define this stuff here, and we can override that, but we can add a lot more to it as well. We, we want to push that out and, and, and use the expressiveness of the client or, or you know, whatever it is that you, you're interacting with Cassandra with. So with regards to us hitting directly into Cassandra, we sit on top of clients and we want to, you know, well, that's what we do now. It was Hector and, you know, we obviously want to extend that. So um, with regards to that, I mean, it's the clients that, that, are, that are sitting at, at, the, at that layer and dealing with that kind of stuff, not Gora. Right. Yeah, uh, that's one of the things we we are probably going to have to put in into into Gora. This is because like every client is different. I mean, I don't think Hector. I don't. Well, I, I don't. Know, I'm not sure if they. So yeah, probably we will put SQL queries. Yeah. Right now we are only supporting these abstractions, so they can be uh, consistent across all the uh, the data stores we are supporting. Like CQL is just specific for Cassandra, so in HBase, we, we, we don't have that, or in Dynamo, we don't have it. So yeah, but of course, that would be an, an interesting thing to do. Our abstraction, it, it, would, it would allow it pretty, fairly simple, I, I think. It's like we just haven't gotten around to it. Sometimes it's really, our mailing list is kind of 
it's, it's kind of hard to follow because I mean we are run, we are doing most most of the Cassandra stuff and the Dynamo stuff, mm -hmm. but there's people <laughs> playing around with Mongo. There's people around playing with HBase and they have difficult configurations and you know you just you just can't can't know it all. It's just mm -hmm. it's too many things. But of course it, that would be an interesting feature to to have in the future. Yeah, sure. What was the the, the second part of the question? Uh, the second question yeah. Was yeah. Sure. You you could just have it. You will only have to map it differently. Do you want to go back? The XML XML file. So we have the XML file. I we've told you that you need three different files, right? So the first one, go back, is this one, and that's um, a mapping file. So on this mapping file, you decide which uh, key space is going to be in which cluster and well what's the host what's the host so you could actually define here which fields you would like to map into which column family or super column okay. so you could just map it in here and just give it a try yeah this is actually um the mapping file taken from apache nutch so um <coughs> It's just taken directly from the source code, uh, and the same with the JSON um, schema, which accompanies. So I mean, it's really down to you to, to you know, define what granularity and, and really define, you know, your model here. Um, what I noticed in this is that oh, I thought we had redundant families that were defined and that weren't being used, but that seems to have all been cleared up. Um, so yeah. And I mean, the, I mean, the stuff that you're picking up in, in, in Nutch is, is just the, the exact same stuff that you would expect to obtain directly from web pages. Um. So basically, what you yeah, we're, we're actually planning to get rid of this XML definition because you, can you go back to the to the schema? Because it's easier if you just define your schema as uh, average as average JSON. See, for example, that we have a, a protocol st status, and that's also a record, and the record has three fields. So there you are actually defining your columns and your, your, your attributes, right? Or your super columns and your attributes. So we are, we are planning to, to drop the XML and just use the, the, JSON, the JSON to generate everything. I mean, so that's going to be easier. Right now, the XML kind of adds a wee bit more um, of a barrier to entry to, to actually getting down to what you want to do, which is use Cassandra or HBase or whatever. Um, the fact that you need to go and write your XML just now on top of your JSON schema, um, bearing in mind that to write the JSON, I mean, and depending on how you want to persist the data, you need to have a reasonably sound understanding of, you know, how the JSON schema goes together and, you know, various nesting and whatever you want to really consider. Um, so, as Renato said, it would be good, um, you know, if we could work towards you know, refining the, 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 the configuration part of Gora, that's one of the aims. Uh, how do you define uh, the mapping file for dynamic schemas where schemas are not predefined and they keep on changing dynamically? How, how do you define those mapping files for dynamic schemas? Like events? Those kind of uh, yeah, yeah. use cases. We don't have a use case like that just now, honestly. Simple case. Um, I've not, I've, I've not worked with that kind of stuff yourself, Renato. Uh, Sorry. I have a micro. <laughs> <laughs> no, we actually don't have any dynamic. Uh, yeah, we are not doing dynamically. And one problem of that is we are using the average schema, the JSON schema, to create these data bins. So we would actually have to. Recreate our database every time you decide to change the schema. Yeah, so we don't have that. So uh, you talked about running MapReduce jobs using your APIs, right? Do you have some kind of like input formats which are predefined for certain specific kind of column families, like time series and all, or uh, do you have like a specific, uh, like gen like a specific input formats, like horses for courses kind of? Okay, so what what we have actually is uh, we have a, a Gora input format, and this Gora input format actually what it does it takes the query to all the 
it takes the query around the, the MapReduce cluster and it goes and takes the data out. So, yeah. So. No, it does. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's one of the things we actually have laying down on on Jira. We have one patch that is called the query optimizer that we're trying to push that, that in. So Gora will actually be able to decide what optimizations to 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 do to apply. It, it, that's kind of uh, a hard part to do because all data stores they they are different and they have different optimizations. So we can. We, yeah, we have to decide which optimization is better in which data store, right? So that, that's kind of a, a hard thing to do. I mean, in, in all honesty, um, Renato and myself came on to start working with Cassandra stuff. Um, inheriting, you know, a project, uh, well, a part of the project that, that, that really wasn't too healthy, wasn't used too much. And I mean, it's come on a lot, it's come on a lot. We've, I've enjoyed working on it. Um, uh, so, you know, this is just another move to try and improve it even still. You know, we're keeping up with, with uh, until recently, the revisions of Hector. We're going to be running with the, the, the client, uh, the, the, the most up-to-date clients now, um, and the same with the Cassandra, uh, you know, the, the dependency on any of the Cassandra stuff that we're using directly, um, if we are using any of it. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's us probably. Oh, we've got more, good. Oh, maybe bad, I don't know, maybe bad. <laughs> so do you support distributed clients? So in a, in a thousand node Cassandra ring, mm. and I need to have 200 clients firing simultaneously, mm. both reads and writes. Mm. Does uh, the architecture support such a distributed client uh, environment? S stuff like that actually has been coming up um, I think, if I understand the problem um, more recently, and there was a couple of issues that we addressed, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, and the, I don't know, don't get me wrong, I don't think the use case was exactly like that, but um, where uh, synchronization was not done very well within Gora, the way that we were using Hector, um, and that stuff's been rooted out now, um, and that was just, uh, that was actually, brought to the surface by the use of Nutch, um, highly concurrent environment, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of stuff going on at the same time, and we had to synchronize on our side on mutations. So stuff like that's been coming up, but I mean, for your use, for that kind of stuff, you, you, you would probably need to go in and, and, and see what's going on. Um, but I mean, more of that stuff's been coming up, as more people are using the code, um, the main, the main uh, direction we've been trying to go is forward and packaging releases and getting it out and get more people using it. So um, we've been trying to root out stuff like that. Yeah, there, there is, the, as Louis said, there are some, we've, we've had some contributions on that part. And yeah, we think it is, it, you could actually try it. But the thing is that uh, being a, an Apache project, sometimes we don't have the, how to say, the, yeah, we don't have the access to that to that many resources, or we don't have the uh, those really big use cases, right? So you are welcome to drop us a line on the mail list, and we'd be happy to to help you getting all those. And one of the problems is also the the concurrency control is probably different uh, is different between all the clients, right? Every client handles it in a different way, so that's also hard hard to control. Like we don't want to be too restrictive with ones. And to yeah, and to open with other ones. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.